no good way to answer this question without sounding like I'm some kind of a sycophant. The truth is... The Boz is back. Meta CTO AMAs his way through some more of our Project Cambria questions, thoughts on VR, field of view, working with Zuck, and more. Well, we haven't shared the, the launch date of Project Cambria, uh, our upcoming headset, but the good news is the Quest 2 is going to stay in market for a good long time. It's a great headset, and it's going to continue to be a great headset. Cambria's going to be a little more expensive, a little more upscale. We've seen some great uses of hand tracking on the Quest platform, and we're really excited about it. Um, and we are getting, we're starting to play with some pretty compelling models of how you could do more uh, in the UI with just your hands uh, and not have the controllers at all. So we're working on it. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I love this question because field of view is cool, and I've played with demos of really wide field of view uh, glasses and enjoyed it. Actually, really tall field of view had way more immersive capacity for me for some reason. I could really feel like I was at the edge of a cliff. Having said that, field of view is a really expensive thing to increase because you're adding a lot of pixels by definition that won't be that useful. Um, it'll be in the periphery uh, and they're just as expensive to power. So, so far it hasn't felt like the right trade off Because of physics, just the amount of power and thermal energy you need to generate the photons that are small enough and bright enough and sharp enough and collimated enough and bend the right way. It's uh, physics. Getting good suggestions here from the fans. Pancake optics, for those who don't know, are much smaller than the Fresnel optics, so you can get a much better form factor, but they do have downsides. They require a lot more power, uh, two times or even four times as much, depending on the polarity of light. So there are some trade-offs to be considered. Right? Yeah, you know, Mark talked about this at our last earnings call, which is to say there's obviously a macroeconomic situation happening. We're going to continue to keep our growth in line with the rest of the business, but it's still growth. So we're still uh, going to continue to grow and expand and, and meet our goals. Yeah, I mean, I just still go into technology. <laughs> make no mistake. I mean, I think this is the highest leverage place that somebody um, can make a difference in the lives of the most people, uh, which is what I always wanted to do. So. But insofar as I'm giving advice to new grads, uh, I just keep focusing on machine learning skills. To be honest with you, it's the single most valuable skill set you can have today. Why is that for AR and VR? Because so much of our work depends on understanding data, sensor data. Pretty serious update. When someone uses their phone in your presence, you know that they're not with you. Their body is there, but their mind is in their phone. That's why we find it so rude when it interrupts our personal interactions, like at a dinner table. That is that person being teleported. It's an amazing property of the human mind that we can do that. We can completely reproject ourselves into a chat conversation or a Snapchat thread or a TikTok video or whatever the thing is. We can completely be engrossed by it so much so that our physical presence, people near us, it's like we're not there. So the metaverse is already here. It's just low fidelity. It's just a 2D screen that we have to teleport ourselves through and do a lot of work. What if it was just immersive? It could be through the same little screen, could be through VR, could be through AR, but it's immersive and we're really there with people and we have a much stronger sense of presence. And once we're there, we can have a much more robust identity and economy um, and friendships and relationships and travel and plans and activities because it's much more robust than the little tiny low fidelity one we all use through our phones. Uh, we already have market fit beyond just gamers, you know, um, certainly we're seeing fitness as a growing use case, uh, social applications, people just hanging out, which is not just for gamers, is already a huge use of the platform, um, and increasingly collaboration, at least for us. I like things that are easy in, easy out, so like arcade and puzzle games often have that property. Um, otherwise, if I'm getting into like something that's like a fantasy RPG, I like it, but I'm 120 hours in before I'm done, it's a, it's a commitment. Because we talk about the metaverse as the successor of the mobile internet, sometimes people think it will be like the internet full of pages and text, but it won't be. It'll be synchronous. It'll be really rich and immersive. It'll be much more like going out into the physical world than like being on your phone. No good way to answer this question without sounding like I'm some kind of a sycophant. The truth is, I like working with him. Otherwise, I wouldn't be. I don't have to do this. Uh, he's a great boss. He's caring. He's thoughtful. He's funny. And he's always trying to do the right thing. A lot of good info there. What questions do you have for the boss for next time? Let's discuss in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next quickie.